how's it going? It's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you some simple DIYs for Easter. I incorporated Dollar Tree products as well as some Michaels and some Amazon finds. And of course, before we get into the projects, I do want to say thank you to my long-term subscribers. You know who you guys are. I call you guys my OGs. If you're brand new to the channel, welcome. And don't worry, you will be OG status soon enough. And then of course, if YouTube recommended this video to you and you are checking out the channel for the first time, I hope that you'll consider becoming a subscriber. And of course, thank you, YouTube. Let's get into the projects. All right, everyone, and for my first project, we are going to take four of these Dollar Tree pallets, also some craft sticks and some wood Jenga pieces. The first thing I'm going to do is build my box. I'm going to do that using my Shore Bonder glue gun. This glue that is actually in the glue gun is also made by Shore Bonder, and it is a wood glue. So it makes doing projects like this very, very easy. It's great because it's liquid, just like a hot glue gun would be but it dries really fast like a hot glue gun does. Uh, after I've got three sides built and they are all nice and sturdy and glued together, I'm gonna then add my fourth piece onto the end, kind of like so. Again, once this is all set and dry, then it's time to add the bottom of the box, which you'll be doing on the top side of the box. For this, all you're gonna do is take your oversized craft sticks and literally just start gluing them across the bottom of the box. As you can see, they are the perfect fit and they are the perfect length for the box. And then once that's dried, I'm going to go ahead and take my Jenga pieces and just glue one in each corner of my box. It just gives it some extra stability and you can barely see it. I then took my Waverly Antiquing Wax in white and just started to cover my project. I wanted this to be fairly light, almost like a whitewash. For this technique, I'm literally just putting it on and then taking a rag and just wiping it away until it's all dry and it is the perfect color. I added some Dollar Tree boxwoods to my box, kind of like so. And now I'm gonna take one of these carrots. I love these carrots so much. What's really cool about these carrots is that the inside is actually made with styrofoam. So it's very easy to skewer it, kind of like so. Once you've got it skewered, just go ahead and trim that skewer down to the perfect size and add it to your arrangement. The next thing I'm going to do is decorate this wooden egg. Whitney from Whiskey and Wit included this in my mystery box a couple months ago and I've never used it, so now is the time. I'm going to first drill a hole in the bottom of the egg and then add a little bit of hot glue and a skewer. This is going to help when I paint it but also help when I add it to my arrangement. I'm going to use my acrylic pouring paint and I'm just going to cover it in pink just with a, a really light coat. I'm gonna balance it on that ruler over that Solo cup so I can go ahead and get my acrylic pour paints mixed together, although we're not technically mixing anything together. The great thing about acrylic pour paints is that they include a chemical called Floetrol or something similar that actually prevents your colors from mixing together. Once you have your acrylic pours in the cup, you're literally going to then pour it on top of your project. This works on canvas, it works on rocks, it works on cardboard, it works on a variety of surfaces, and Arteza makes it super, super simple because you do not have to add any other colors to this, which I love, or any other chemicals for that matter. So once everything has dried, um, for this one, I'm gonna let it sit for 24 hours. I have it skewered and stuck in that wood block. Now I'm gonna add a bow to my box. Now I hate making bows on camera. I don't think I'm very good at them, at least not the making of them and teaching part of them anyway. And then I added my skewers and my eggs and everything was beautiful. I love the way that this turned out. You could certainly add your own variety of flowers to this. It's a cute arrangement and it's something very different and fun for Easter. And speaking of Easter and more fun, we are going to make some garland. For the garland, you're gonna use a couple packages of these carrots, some twine, and then also some beads of any color. Also, I do recommend that you grab an embroidery needle. I picked these up from Amazon, and uh, you're going to take your thread and just uh, thread your needle. And then I'm going to take six beads and a carrot, and six beads and a carrot, and just continue that process until I have a piece of garland or a strand of garland that is the appropriate size or the perfect size for my project. Now, the great thing about those carrots, remember they are styrofoam. So that embroidery needle is actually going to go through 
nicely. And if you used a regular sewing needle, it might be a little small. You might be able to do it. Um, maybe if you used thread instead of a thicker twine like I used. But either way, I think you will agree that this is going to be the cutest garland when it's all done. You could certainly mix up your beads if you wanted to do some larger and some smaller. I happen to have all of these beads from a Christmas garland that I cut apart. So um, again, that needle also helps thread those beads. It helps a lot actually. And then once you have your garland at the desired level or desired length, I don't know why I said level. Go ahead and just tie it off in a circle, kind of like I did here, and that will give you something to hang your garland with. Again, super, super cute. I love the way this looks on my little fireplace, and uh, it is the perfect start to decorating the fireplace for Easter. And for my next project, we're gonna make a decorative box or a decorative ceramic box. First thing I'm gonna use is the base for one of these decorative ceramic boxes that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. I actually used the lid for another project, so I had the base left over. Also, you're gonna take two of these garden chimes, and uh, the first one you're gonna take, and you're gonna actually bend it to fit on top of your ceramic box, kind of like so. And uh, just take those floral petals and literally start bending them down. The first set of floral petals, you're actually going to then bend um, to where they're, they're very tightly fitting on top of the lid. So hopefully that makes sense. The second one, you're going to kind of fluff up your flower a little bit more, kind of like I'm doing here. You're gonna pull those leaves apart and definitely expose where they did not paint those leaves all together. And uh, for this, um, you're gonna also, of course, remove all of those little chimes or those hanging hardwares. And for that, again, I just use my lineman pliers. And now you're going to take your two flowers and glue them together so you have something that looks like this. Again, I think this is super, super cute. I love the way this looks even right now, but we are going to take these outside and paint them. Now, when I got outside, I realized that I really loved the pattern on that ceramic base. So I decided not to paint that. Instead, I'm gonna paint my flower a complementary color. I'm gonna use this Midnight Blue from Rust-Oleum, and I'm going to paint the inside and the outside of that flower. This took about two coats, I would say, and it was mainly just because I needed to get into the kind of the cracks and the crevices of the flower. Again, Rust-Oleum paint works so good on metal. This was super, super easy. Then I just added it right back on top of the box, and you have the cutest little decorative box that you can put in the bathroom. You can put Q-tips or dental picks or anything in this. I really, really love this. I think it would be amazing if it was also spray painted all in white or even to keep jewelry in. For my next project, you're gonna use one of these trays. I picked this up from Plaid Crafts. This was actually from a store called Pop Shelf. I think you can probably order this online or even find it on Amazon. I'm gonna add a piece of cardstock to the base of that tray and uh, just kind of cut it out to mimic that same design. Now, these can be a little challenging, as you know, but I'm going to take a clear cutting mat from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna lay it on top of my tray and then I'm gonna take a Sharpie and just slowly trace around the interior part of the tray, literally giving myself a mold, if you will. And then I'm gonna take, or a, is, it, is it a mold? I don't think it's a mold. What is it, a, a stencil? Um, anyway, that you, I think you understand what I'm doing here. And uh, I did add some scotch tape on either end of it and then trimmed it out. And look how perfectly that fits down inside of here. Like this is kind of a foolproof method because sometimes it's really hard to cover the insides of those trays. Now I'm gonna take my template and add it on top or add it to the back of my uh, cardstock. This is the print that's on the back side here. And I'm gonna take a pencil and literally just once again, start tracing around that template. And then once I have that template all traced out, I'm gonna take some scissors and just literally trim it out and just fit it down in the bottom of the tray and it is going to fit perfectly. Now, I am going to take my tray outside. I'm gonna give this a couple coats of my white spray paint and then take it back inside. 
Once I've got it inside, I'm gonna add some of this white glue stick just to the bottom of the tray, just to make sure that everything holds nice and firm and stays in place. And then I'm going to add my scrapbook paper right on top and have the cutest tray for my coffee table. I think this is super, super sweet and it is the perfect way to start decorating once again for Easter.